Hi guys, welcome to Glitz and Glitter. I've got something different for you today. Check out this three tier stand that I'm going to resin. I'm going to do these wood, these wood parts here. So I'm going to unscrew all three of these, get them set up. And I told you the other day, if you watch the video where my friend made that uh, Lazy Susan and it looked like a slice of wood. It looked like they she sliced the wood open. Even though this is wood, um, I'm going to give it a different look. So I'm going to try to recreate what she did on this three tier stand. So let me get set up and we'll get started. Okay, I have disassembled it. So if any of you who know that I do sell my demos at cost, this can be shipped. It disassembles the same as a cupcake stand. So those are the pieces. And then I have separated the three trays from there. And I have lifted them up off of the counter with some jars. And I poked a hole in the center so it can drip down. I'm not sure how much resin, but I will show you the colors that I will be using. I'll let you know how much resin. So I'm going to be using this acrylic. It looks really white, but it's really not. Once it's mixed in with the resin, it will actually look like this light colored wood. And then I'm going to mix some of this acrylic copper metallic color for the swirls of the wood grain. And then I'm going to also do a little bit, tiny bit of brown mica powder. So let me figure out how much I think I'm going to need and I'll come back and we'll get this poured. Now I am going to be using a food safe resin. I will link everything in the description below that I'm using. So in case you want to know what it is or where you can get it, just check the description below. But it will be a food safe resin because I don't know if any food will be in here. So better safe than sorry. I've mixed up all the colors. I started with eight ounces. And I told you that this color was not going to be as light as the bottle. See, this is the bottle. You see that? And this is the color. Once it mixed into the resin, it did go a little darker, which I knew. Um, so this is, I kept five ounces of this color. And then I've got 80 mLs of the copper, almost three ounces, not quite, I guess two ounces maybe, I don't know, but that's the copper. And then the rest in this tiny cup is the brown. It's not a huge contrast between the copper and brown, but there is some. So what I'm going to do um, is pour this one on all three and get them situated. Since this is the deepest anyway, I don't want it sitting here flash curing on me. So I am going to just drizzle it on and then wipe it with my, my hand. Or maybe not my hand yet. I will be using my hand to get that swirl effect as if it was a slice of tree, uh, tree slice, you know what I mean? Trying not to use my hand, but I know I'm going to just because I have to touch my camera. I want to try to wait till the end. So I'm just going to do this on all three. Let's see if I can switch. I do want to tell you, when I do my resin, when I mix my resin in the eight ounces, I don't know if it matters. I've never had an issue. I always mix my A first. 
always because if I get distracted, which happens a lot with phone calls or what, whatever people, and I forget which one I mix, I never forget which one I mix because I always start with A. So that's how I remember what I'm doing. sure your surface is level before you start. I know that this is level because we built this countertop. I have also poured this countertop with resin if you want to see that in the link in the description box is a, a tour of this room that I had my husband do for me and we did pour the countertops with resin in here so if you want to see how that turned out which is beautiful just go in my description box and you will see that I'm going to get it all on first and then I'll worry about the edges next. So I'm just going to torch it real quick. Remove any bubbles. This food grade resin was super thick. So it'll probably set up quicker than normal. This I'm just going to going to do it in a circle. Kind of like I probably have too much. And then I'm going to torch it. Then I'm going to drizzle this one on. Kind of the same way. I'm just going to take my hand and basically blend it. And when it goes over the sides, that's good because you want the sides covered anyway. I will go through with my little um, silicone tool to make sure all the sides are covered.
This one I need a little more on the edge. Sneak a little bit of this lighter color one. Just go through with your little, you can even swirl it with this. That works too. Just make sure there's no dust particles in there. Like in here, there's one little piece. And then just fix your line. Add any colors that you want right now. I think I'm gonna add a little more of the dark brown because I did lose a lot of it. Just softening these lines. Alright, I think that's good. It's not going to move that much, seeing that it's a flat surface. And then just take this tool, and if you want to cover the edges, cover it with this, this tool. So I'm just going to do that. Since you won't be able to see it anyway, I'm going to go ahead and turn you off for now. And we'll come back as soon as they are cured. I'll bring you down in a second to get a closer look. But if you want to know how I got this container clean and ready to use in like a minute, there's a link in my description to show you exactly how I do it. 
So this resin is really, really sets up fast. So if you are using this food grade resin and you do use the link and get the same stuff, you do have to work kind of quick because I did pour some extras. There's that one. Now this one I may have to do over because it is leaning in. It's pitched towards the center and there's a ton of it underneath it. So this one, I might have to plug that little hole and do a second coat because it's going to have a different pattern than the rest of them if I don't do that. Sorry about those lights. Those are my under cabinet lighting. I can't do anything about that. So this one, um, I might do over, but I did have about two ounces left over. So we will have these to do. I usually use these. I think it's a pendant mold, but they're really big. So I use them as uh, bookmarks and then I'll make some some magnets out of these. So this one I'm concerned about, but the other two are pretty level and they're really not moving much. So I'll come back when it's cured and we'll make a decision what I'm going to do about that one. These are all dried and I will um, show you how they turned out. Now we did already re-drill the hole just because it did drip. The drips did form around there. So I had to re-drill the hole so these pieces would fit back up inside there. And also the one thing I didn't show you was re-pouring the, the largest one just because I, it's the same thing. So um, not necessarily like these big drops I'll have to get off. But I'm not too concerned about the back because you're never going to see the back. So that's the small one. Here's the medium one. They stayed pretty good. They didn't move too much. Here's the back of that one's pretty clean. And I will have to zoom out a little bit or maybe I will just move the camera. Here is the large one. Let me move a few things. Sorry guys. So the pattern came out different than the others, but I knew that would happen. Anytime you remix and you have, I mean, the colors are about the same. Here, let me grab another one. It's just anytime you do something separate, it's not going to be exactly the same as the other. So what happened was the wood was dipping towards the center. There was nothing I can do to level that. So I let it dry. And I probably wouldn't have re-poured it. The only reason I re-poured it is because the edges got really thin. And because it moved this way, it was moving the pattern. So the pattern didn't match the others at all. So I did just take a piece of tape. We re-drilled it there. We took I took a piece of duct tape and I covered the hole. And then I just re-poured it. So it just sat on top and it didn't move at all. So I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and put this all back together. If anybody is interested in this demo, please email me and I will get this shipped out to you um, for cost plus the shipping. And um, maybe someone out there in YouTube land will enjoy this three tier stand. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I have a whole bunch of other things in my closet that are non mold related. I think I'm going to start getting into some of those. Just to show you a few other things that you could do. Oh, I do have some extras that I can unmold for you that came from the leftover resin. These are going to be freebies for all those who purchased from me any of my, my demos. So not only are you getting your stuff for cost, but you're also getting a whole bunch of freebies. And I try to match the freebies to whatever you're ordering. So if you ordered this, I try to give you the pieces that did go with it. If I don't have any, then I'll find something else for you in the same category. So these are going to be magnets. That's the dark brown. These are the lighter copper color. These can either be pendants, which are kind of large for a pendant. I use them for bookmarks. See the pattern in there? There's one. This one I'm going to have to trim a little bit. I over poured the top there, but that's all right. There's two. That looks pretty. Looks like a wood grain the way it cured. 
Those were the copper. These are the dark brown. And one more. All right, guys. Thanks for coming in. I do appreciate it. If you have not yet done so, please subscribe to my channel. It does help me more than you think it would. And you guys all have a blessed day. Bye.